This episode is made possible by Drizzly. Color clashing's in, crochets are trending, and Y2K fashion is back for who knows what reason. But your favorite drinks never go out of style with Drizzly, the number one app for alcohol delivery. Drizzly has you covered with the largest selection of beer, wine, and spirits delivered in under 60 minutes. They won't judge you for drinking last season's cocktails. Maybe you can't be talked out of participating in the 2000s revival, but at least they can get you out of wearing those jelly platforms to the corner store. With Drizzly, it's easier than ever to find a timeless classic or shake it up with something fresh. Need something special to impress a trendsetter who has it all? Give the gift of drinks with Drizzly because you can't buy wine the wrong size. It's a no-brainer. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com today. Hi, I'm Yue Xu. And I'm Julie Kravchik. We are active daters turned dating sociologists. Here to dive into everything modern dating and relationships. Welcome to the Dateable Podcast. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Brunch Talk where we dive into your burning dating questions. So many of these questions have come in while we were on our off season. So now we have a nice library of them, but doesn't mean that you can't keep sending them in. Keep sending them in. You can at least do just email us (laughs) hello at datablepodcast.com. There you go. We have so many to choose from. Like these questions have been amazing. I feel like it's kind of fun to like comb through all the ones we have and figure out which one do we want to do today? They're oh so relatable. If you feel like you're alone in what you're going through in dating, just know there's at least a million other people (laughs) going through the same thing. That should make you feel better, right? Honestly, that was a huge issue inspiration for me to start dateable because I remember feeling just Mm -hmm. so alone on this journey like at the beginning pre-dateable days before I even met you a long time ago I was just like why is it just me why can't I get to the third date why do people stop texting me and then I realized it's freaking everyone that this is happening to and there is something nice about knowing that you are not fundamentally flawed as a human being (laughs) and that you can't get out of it (laughs) in a lot of it is just modern dating culture but we are here to help you get out of it that is why we are here that is our mission we've been there ourselves and we don't want you to think like there's anything wrong you are not alone you're not alone in any of this but we do want to know is this helpful do you all like the brunch talks should we keep these going you all like us answering question on sundays and we shoot the shit a little bit let us know if this format is working for you we love experimenting and we want to serve you and yeah. as we help you navigate through modern dating. So let us know if this is something you want us to continue doing. Serve you literally. I like it. <laughs> serve you brunch. Answers. It started off as more of an experimental piece and we got good feedback last season when we did it. So we're keeping it rolling, but this is continuously an evolution. We want to keep updating content and like you, I said, serve you and figure out what is the most helpful. So if you're enjoying Brunch Talk, drop us five stars for the reviews. That always helps. If you're not enjoying Brunch Talk, maybe send us an email. That also helps a little more. (laughs) Before you give us us a review. (laughs) (laughs) Or give us five stars and just be like, I love the main podcast. I'm not sure about Brunch Talk. That's okay too. But if you love Brunch Talk, you want to keep it going, give us five stars. Say, I live for Sundays. Yeah. I eat brunch with you. We've heard people say that before. So give us that review. Yeah. Give us that validation. Give us feedback. (laughs) We always want that feedback because we don't get that normally in real life, in our personal relationships. It's like you and I just talking to each other. You know, (laughs) even the other day, my odd sister was like, I listen every week. You guys give me hope. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. I had no idea because we have no idea who's listening. Now we know. We know at least two people are listening. They're all (laughs) Julie's relatives. We know more (laughs) than two people are listening. We know the number of people. We just don't have any faces in names associated with them outside of the Facebook group. That's why the Facebook group has just been such a godsend because we can actually see humans, real life people Mm -hmm. that are Mm -hmm. listening to this podcast that I feel like opened up so many doors for us in 2020 because we're like, oh, you listen. We understand you better now. You have a name (laughs) and a face. (laughs) You're not just a number. You're never just a number to us. You're not a bot. Unfortunately, podcasting stats make you just a number. It's unfortunate. You're never a number to us. We see your faces. We see your names. And back to brunch talk. Let's get to the question of this week. The question is, 
Is the saying, if they wanted to, they would, true? This is a very popular saying, so I'm glad someone's asking this. But for more context, someone wrote in and said, I've been dating this great girl, but she recently laid down the fact that she's not ready to be in a relationship right now. Mm. She's saying it has nothing to do with me, and she thinks I'm amazing, someone she could see herself with, but she just can't. Is this BS or is she telling the truth? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, okay. Been there. Been on both ends of that conversation. I think it's easy to simplify if they wanted to, they would. If they like me enough, they would want to be with me. If they wanted to make this work, they would make it work. It's not that simple, though, because I think people, you never know where they are in their stage in life. And relationships may not be a priority for them. They may have other things that are urgent for them to address. Mental health could be a big part of it. We don't know. But ultimately, what this person is saying is, I'm not ready to be with you. I'm not going to be with you. I don't want to be with you. As harsh as that sounds, we always think like, oh, if they really truly liked me, they would pursue me or show me this grand gesture of them liking me. It's not that easy. It doesn't always work out that way. And that's not always the rule of thumb. It makes me think of that modern love episode with Anne Hathaway, the one that yeah. was dealing with severe depression. Yeah. She was manic depressant. So she met someone on a manic up day at a supermarket in a grocery store. And the guy, you know, was clearly ecstatic. She was very happy, excited to go on a date with him. The day of the date comes around and she's in a depressive state, could not get out of bed, calls off the date at the last minute. And of course, this person's confused, right? Because they're just like, Mm -hmm. wait, maybe they changed their mind about me. We always go inward of, oh, it must be because of something I did, or they decided I'm not good enough, or they want to date other people. But we really have no idea what's going on with people after, Mm -mm. I don't know, meeting them for, in this case, 15 minutes max. But even if we go on a date, an hour, two hours over cocktails, we have no idea what's going on in people's lives. And I remember for years, I felt this way, like if they wanted to, they would. And I do think that like we have to give people grace, but that also doesn't mean that that excuses people. Like if you truly want someone that's going to step up, don't be with someone that can't do it. Like in not in the sense of if they wanted to, they would and feel like, oh, you're not good enough because they didn't want to enough. Mm -hmm. But there's someone out there that wants to, that will step up. And maybe it's because that they're in the place to step up. But regardless, it almost doesn't matter what the reason is. You just want someone that's aligned with what you want. Intention doesn't always translate to action. No. Someone could want to be there for you. Someone could want to be in a relationship with you. But if they don't take the action of meeting you there, then what's the point? You're not getting the benefit of the intention. No. We can't rely just on intention alone. But if someone doesn't do these things, doesn't mean that they didn't intend to. We have to understand that. Shift our expectations to know that people still may intend wholeheartedly to be there for you and be with you. They just can't do it. So that just means it's not that if they wanted to, they would. It's that if they were capable of doing it, they would. I mean, it reminds me of my experience with my ex of five years on again, off again. I really believe his intention was that he loved me and wanted to be with me. I don't doubt Mm -hmm. that intention. But like clockwork, we would be together. He couldn't do it because of mental health, other stuff that was happening in his life. Mm -hmm. We'd break up and then... A month later, he'd come back and say, like, I want to be with you. And then we'd be together for like a month. And then the same thing would happen. And this was a bad cycle. And I remember talking to a close friend of mine who is a therapist. And she was like, I remember being like, if he really wanted to be with me, he would be. And she's like, he can't even be there for himself. Yeah. Like, it doesn't have anything to do with you. Like, he can't do it. And actually hearing that, I was like, oh my God, you're right. Like, it's unfortunate because of course I'd wanted it to work a certain way. Yeah. But the reality of the situation was that it wasn't. And I think by holding on to someone's intention or holding on to this, if they wanted to, they would mentality, 
you're kind of in this like love conquers all myth. Mm. And I stayed with this person or I stayed attached to the hope of this person is probably a better way to put it Mm. for too long instead of just finding someone that could meet me. And with my current partner, it's like he was just looking for the same thing that I was looking for. And that made it work, you know, and he did want it. And that's ultimately what you want is you want someone that also wants it. But I think we can't be kind of trying to force these people that it's not either what they want or they're not capable of following through. It's hard not to take it personally because you're attaching your self-worth to the want. If they wanted to be with me, yeah, they would do these things. Your self-worth is not tied to any of these people's actions because they're doing it independently. Mm -hmm. This is so dependent on what's going on in their life. But it's not really your job to figure out what's going on. It's not your job to figure out whether they're ready or not because they will show you if they are ready. They'll show you they will be there for you, not just want to. People can say whatever they want. (laughs) We always articulate ourselves in a certain way that we want other people to perceive us in that way. But it's the action that shows it all. And if they're not being consistent with their actions, that is your answer Right. right there. This is why so many people get stuck in relationships or these off and on relationships like yours. Yeah. They're like, oh, my God, but they tell me they want to be with me. They tell me that they want to work on these things. They tell me that they want to be the best partner for me. Well, they can tell you whatever they want. That's lip service. They have to show it in the actions. And if they're not doing that consistently, get out. Get out. Definitely. Okay. before we keep going, let's take a quick break for some messages. This episode is made possible by Nux Active. Work hard, play hard, and slay through the sweat with Nux Active. Nux Active is high-performance activewear that doesn't compromise on the chic. Located in Los Angeles, their diverse women-operated team oversees every meticulous detail of the design process, from the first stitch to the last shipment. They channel positive planet vibes through a commitment to using the best organic fabrics and recycled materials as much as possible. Nux Active is active fashion that flexes and fits like a buttery second skin. Power through Pilates, dare to reach your hit goals, and strive for that extra rep in Nux Active. I've been wearing my new set for basically everything, from from running errands to actual running. And speaking of running, run, don't walk over to nuxactive.com. That's N-U-X-A-C-T-I-V-E.com to check out the latest collection and energizing colorways. And as a gift to you, take 20% off your purchase with the promo code DATABLE20 at checkout. Make positive moves with Nux Active. That's N-U-X-A-C-T-I-V-E.com and use the code D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E-20. So how do you get out of this mentality if you feel like if they wanted to, they would? Mm. How do you start to reshape this to this just isn't the right match for me? I'm going to move forward. Well, I think one is seek understanding. I think that's like the most important piece for us to move on rather than just thinking about what if. What if this? What if that? Yeah. Yeah. So one is we always have to separate the intention from the impact. You can go to this person who's telling you this and say, I hear your intention. The impact on me is negative. So can you explain why the intention is not translating to the impact for me? Seeking understanding will help you go deeper in why this person cannot step up or cannot show you the actions that they want to. And hopefully it'll clarify for them as well why they're not able to meet your needs. No, I like that a lot. The separate intention from impact. That's really key. You can have all the intentions in the world. It doesn't matter. (laughs) But I do think getting closure is important too. And there might be some situations you never get closure and you never know what was really going on for them, especially if you only went out once, right? Like you just, Mm -hmm. you might not know that they have some major mental health issue going on or whatever else they don't want to share at that time. And honestly, at that point, it's not necessarily on them to share if you barely know them. Right. But I think if you do have more of an established relationship, Looking at it more objectively can help and looking at it like, okay, for me personally, like one of the things that was important was, okay, does my next partner 
are they happy with their life? Mm. Like that doesn't like to do with me, right? So it's something though that I took away from this experience that it became difficult to date someone that wasn't. Mm. So how do you start to use what you've learned as like the things that you don't want in the future? Your nose, right? Right. So how do you build on that from your experiences? But the only way to learn and grow from this instead of just dwelling in I'm not good enough, if they wanted to, they would, all this stuff is to understand as much as possible. And hopefully you're with someone that can be honest and give you a little so you don't put that all on yourself. Yeah, that's a lot of pressure on yourself. I think it's what we've learned from rom-coms. This is why we think this way. Because if people verbalize they're going to do something, they're going to show you and they're going to show you this grand gesture and run to you as you're boarding your plane because they said (sighs) they want to totally fuck this. It's so dumb. (laughs) It's so dumb because why would I – the running to the airport scene – bothers me every time. So I'm like, it's not even realistic. Like, what if I'm flying Southwest? I'm trying to get the best seat possible. And now you're <laughs> delaying me from boarding. You can't even get into the gate without a boarding pass. Like, are these people going True. and buying a boarding pass? It doesn't make sense. Oh, what a waste but of money. that's what we need to remember, right? Because I think it's actually kind of funny. This, if they wanted to, they would saying is relatively new. Like I think it like got really popular through TikTok. You just see all these mm. quote unquote relationship experts saying that, which is also I feel like the new detrimental rom-com is TikTok experts <laughs> pretending to be da- like it's just like uh. rando people that <sighs> feel like now that they have this platform to like give advice in these very Everyone's a dating you know, expert. Yes. I mean we purposely try to never give black and white advice. For this yeah. purpose. But I remember we had this conversation on one of our podcast episodes with Rayanne from Confident Collective. And I remember her being like, Should I, all these people on TikTok are saying this? And we're like, Don't listen to them. Don't they listen no to TikTok. About. Don't listen to them. It's just like some random person in their living room spitting out advice. You have no idea what their situation is. Anyways, I'm gonna stop there. But Good PSA. it's kind of funny that the effects of rom-coms are still bleeding into our lives today. Mm-hmm. I feel like they don't even make rom-coms like this anymore. No, they don't. They don't. They've stopped. Yet this is like a new saying, a new twist on the rom-com Yeah, that we still, it's so ingrained in all of us, this mentality of like, this person's going to stand in the rain with a boom box if they really wanted to. Who cares if they get electrocuted? They're still going to do it. <laughs> Oh, it was my childhood dream to have John Cusack hold his boombox off on my <laughs> window. And it's still maybe my fantasy. But if he wanted to, he would, right? <laughs> if John Cusack wanted to exactly. impress me, he would. He would just show up at my window. Come on, people. Like I also realize being in a relationship too, I can't project my way of thinking onto my partner no. or anybody else. No. Cause I've always thought that too. I'm like, well, if I were him, I would do this. Yeah. I would show my yeah. love in this way. But I have to remember I'm not him. I'm not anybody else. Yeah. I can only speak for myself. So if I feel like, well, if I want to show my love, I would do it this way. That helps me to be curious and be like, babe, how do you like to show your love? Right. If you wanted to show me that you appreciated me. How would you do that? Because I'm not going to project what I would do onto you. Well, I think especially in hetero relationships, the way that we show love and think about love is very different. And I think culturally, women, I'm not saying there's no hetero men out there that have not watched rom-coms, but it's been more of a woman thing, right? And mm. we talk about our with our friends, we project all these, they should be doing this. And it's almost like the other half doesn't have the script that we expect them to follow. Oh, yeah. There's no manual. <laughs> this did not come like an Ikea furniture box. Like There are no directions whatsoever. We just assume people will be able to read our minds. This was so detrimental for my dating life. In my 20s, I remember the guy in New York talked about him a million times. I remember my friend said, if he wants to be with you, he would call every cab for you. Yeah. She said that. And I was like, wow. It's the same. If they wanted to, they would. It's the same thing. What yeah. a rule that she had. And it <laughs> blew my mind at the time. I was like, you're right. If he really wanted to pursue me, 
he would call every cab. So the one date we so had, ridiculous. he did not call my cab. I got so mad at him. It's oh like, my God. well, if you really liked me and respected me, you would have called my cab. And he's like, says who? <laughs> says my friend. So dumb when you think about it. But okay, we don't mean to say this. If you are in the place that you're holding on to this, you and I had to spend seven years on learning this. Yes. I listened back to one of our very early episodes. It might have been episode one that we did. Uh, and we basically asked this question of the guy that we were talking to. Kurt. We're like, yeah, we had this whole thing. Like, why aren't you standing with the boombox professing your love? And... <laughs> You know, we have this expectation, like, if you wanted to, you would. It's taken us a long time to unlearn (laughs) and to get to the root of where some of this stuff is coming from. So if you're still struggling, you still have that creeping thought that comes in, listen to this episode again, take a deep (laughs) breath, it's gonna be okay. (laughs) We're so much more woke now, thank God. We were just dumb. I don't even know if woke is the right (laughs) word, but... I don't know. Sometimes I can't listen back to some of the early ones because it's just so cringy. Oh. It shows how far we've come, that's for sure. (laughs) Yeah. Well, dating is a whole learning experience. But we've said this time and time again. We are not mind readers. We can't expect other people to be mind readers. We cannot expect other people to follow our invisible rules that we've set out of nowhere. Nope. (laughs) And we don't even communicate it. We can't expect other people to know our needs just by just because they know us or they like us. None of this comes with the territory. All of this needs to be communicated. Otherwise, it's not out there in the universe for anybody to understand. We are all individuals that come with our individual life experiences, our own expectations, our own school of thought, our own ways of being brought up. So how can we expect a mere stranger, even if you've been with them for five, six, 10 years, that's still a mere stranger (sighs) relative to your lifetime to understand what you expect them to do or expect them to not to do. Yeah. What a thought. We're not magicians here. We are not. Well, I'm glad that we had this question come in because I think this is, you know, like we said, it's something that comes up a lot. It's the new hot phrase. If they wanted to, they would, but it's actually not the new hot phrase because it's been going on forever. It's just reworded and new in that regard. But it's this, yeah, this detrimental way of thinking. So find someone that wants to. We're not saying don't, but also don't feel bad if someone doesn't want to. There's probably more going on. Or they just weren't the right fit. Or they weren't the right fit. I like to think that way. They're just making way for the right person. Exactly. I mean, we say it all the time. You can't be everyone's cup of tea. So maybe they got something else going on. Maybe they just didn't like you. And that's okay. Like, that's okay. Yep. We need to be okay with not every person falling in love with us, even if we feel like we had a magical time with them. It doesn't mean that they did necessarily. And at the end of the day, you want to find someone that is in it with you. That's all there is. That's what keeps things going is having two people that are in it. I feel like I had so many relationships where I was the one that was holding it all together. Mm -hmm. And I decided I was done with that. And ta-da! In comes the right person for you. Yeah, Exactly. Exactly. Thanks for this question. Everybody else, send in your questions. These just get better and better. You can email us, hello at datablepodcast.com or DM us on Instagram at datablepodcast is the handle. We appreciate those questions. And while you're at it, because you'll be on the internet anyway, (laughs) you can just go to Apple Podcasts and give us a five-star review. That way you can hit it all in once, you know, send us a question and give us a review at the same time. Feel really productive in what you did. You did a good thing. Good dating karma coming for you. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Well, we'll see you next week for another episode of Brunch Talk. Adios. The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Media Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. You can follow us on Instagram at Dateable Podcast and visit datablepodcast.com for access to all the episodes and our premium programs. Also, make sure to subscribe today if you haven't already on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform. So you are the first to get all the latest episodes. And most importantly, stay dateable. 
92% of households that join Peloton early in the year are still active a year later. Yeah, if you like cycling to EDM. Not just EDM. Try cycling to Broadway hits, take a scenic hike in Iceland on our treadmill, or row to some 80s jams. Because I have so much free time. Whether you have 30 minutes or just five, Peloton can fit any schedule. 92% stick with it. So can you. Try Peloton tread, row, or bikes risk-free with a 30-day home trial. New members only. Not available in remote locations. See additional terms at onepeloton.com slash home dash trial.